Home Assistant is a popular open source home automation platform. If I have my Elgato key light running off of a desktop app and my Philips Hue smart lights running off of a mobile app, Home Assistant is one way you can bring together all those different smart devices into one web dashboard. I have Home Assistant installed and running on a dedicated Raspberry Pi in my garage. Let's work with Home Assistant's WebSocket API. A lot of modern websites and web applications use WebSockets. I have here Home Assistant's dashboard running locally on port 8123. And you can see this is my connected devices in my home, specifically this room here, garage. Now, just so you know, I'm gonna be using this digital assistant. And so if you're also using this digital assistant, it might get triggered now if you have the audio turned up. So when I ask my digital assistant, okay, Google, turn on the garage lights. Got it, turning three lights on. You can see that pretty much instantaneously, as soon as the digital assistant noted that voice command, it turned on the lights and it was reflected, that change was reflected in real time. That snappy response is why I suspect that WebSockets are being used behind the scenes. And to double check for sure, I'm going to open up my browser web tools, dev tools, and tab over to network. And I can see all the different types of calls that might be coming through and filter on WebSockets. And let's just refresh this page, filtered on WebSockets. You can see there's one network call here, and we can even inspect into the URL, the method, the status code, switching protocols, um, and then dig further into the messages that are going out from there. So yes, Home Assistant does use WebSockets, and if I didn't want to sniff the network traffic here, I could also read through the documentation. Let's do that next. So now we're looking at the Home Assistant developer docs. One of the most popular topics is going to be the Home Assistant API. And they have a REST API and a WebSocket API. A lot of times in Internet of Things, you might have both protocols, you might support both pro protocols. REST is very good for ad hoc or one-off sends. Say I wanna turn on a light or turn off a light one time. REST is very concise and can do that one thing really well. WebSockets is good for bi-directional communication, so between client and server. So in the case of the Home Assistant web dashboard, maybe we're listening for state changes on all the connected devices. And when that happens and that update gets sent over, then the dashboard can be um, updated in very real time versus querying, hey, are you on or off? Are you on or off? Polling periodically. So for the WebSocket API, we can look through how to authorize our API calls as well as different commands that we can send through the WebSocket API. In the next section, we'll look at how to do this in Postman. Next, let's use Postman as an API client to interact with our Home Assistant local server. I'm here in Postman in a public workspace called Program Smart Lights, and there's a collection here called Home Assistant WebSockets. If I take a look at the documentation, I can see that I'm gonna need a long-lived access token. I'll need to fork this collection to my own workspace, save my token, connect to the WebSocket server, and then authorize my connection. Okay, so let's start off by forking this collection to our own workspace so we can make changes to it. Under the icon, we'll fork it and we'll move it to a personal workspace I have called Internet of Things. And the fork has been created. Let's navigate over to that workspace. And here's that collection that we just forked over. All right, looking at the documentation again, I'll need a long-lived access token from the Home Assistant profile. Let's go back over to our Home Assistant instance. And under our profile, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see a section for long-lived access tokens. So let's create a token. I'll call it video demo. And we'll copy this access token to our clipboard. It will not be shown again. So back over to Postman. I need to save this token as a collection variable. So under the variables tab, you can see a token variable already. And so I'm in a personal workspace right now. You can see there's only a one, an icon for one person. 
Only I will see anything in this workspace when I save my changes. If you're working in a team or public workspace, you'll want to be very, very careful not to paste your token in initial value. Anything in initial value will get saved to your account and anyone who has access to your workspace will be able to see that value. In this case, I could have the same token in, under initial value and current value, but just to be doubly sure that somebody doesn't see this and accidentally copy that behavior, I'm just gonna leave it under current value. Now if I log out or I move to a different machine, I won't have access to that current value and I'll have to generate a new token. Okay, so from here we'll save our changes and load up that first request we have in our collection. Okay, so we can see the request URL has the WebSockets protocol Going to the Home Assistant local server, here's our port 8123, going to slash API slash WebSocket. And the cool thing about uh, this collection is that there are saved messages. So under the Messages tab, you can see all these different saved messages pre-configured so that I can send them off right away. So the first one says Establish Connection and there's nothing under Message. So let's just connect, establish a connection and see what we get. On the bottom, you can see Postman has connected to the local server, and here's all the network details there. And the server with the down arrow has responded with a JSON object saying, auth is required. I didn't provide my credentials. I didn't send in my token yet. So the server is telling me I need to authorize. And in fact, I was too slow, so the server automatically disconnected from the client. Okay, so let's clear our messages so we can have this a little bit more clean. And I can see that after I establish a connection, the next message I should probably send is going to be my access token. And this is the syntax where Postman will resolve it to the variable that we saved earlier. Okay, so let's establish a connection once again. Uh, once again, auth required, so let's load up our auth message and send that message. Okay, so anything with an up arrow is client sending to the server and down arrow is the server response. So this time when the server asked for auth, we sent in our access token and server said, okay, yes, auth is okay. And now we have all the time in the world um, to send our subsequent messages. So let's load up the next one, subscribe events. Okay, so the Home Assistant WebSockets API requires that you submit an ID with your message, and this is so if there's a bunch of messages being sent, you're able to locate precisely which message um, you previously sent. So you do need to increment these. In this case, we could start at one or we could start at 18, just so long as it increments and it's unique. And we will be subscribing to events. This event type will let us know every time a device has a state change. So this is part of the beauty of WebSockets. For REST, if you're sending a one-off ad hoc call to turn on a light, that's great. If you want to send a one-off ad hoc, hey, what's the status? That's great. But if you want to establish a persistent connection and receive any kind of updates bi-directionally, um, this is a really efficient way to notice when state has changed, which is good for monitoring sensor data or having live dashboards like we were looking at earlier where the real-time updates come very quickly. So let's send this payload so that we will subscribe to events. Okay, so we sent off that payload client to the server, server responded and said success true. Oh, something happened. What happened? Okay, so an event has already come in. What has changed? Okay, so one of the events that we we're listening to was that the sun has gone above the horizon. So this is probably local data. I didn't even realize that this watched it. I won't tell you what elevation I'm at and scroll further down, but that is an event that just came in real time. Now, if we wanted to trigger other types of events, I could get out my mobile app, I could get out my desktop app, I'm gonna probably use my digital assistant again to trigger some sort of change. Okay, Google, turn off my garage lights. So if I were back on the web dashboard, okay, turning three lights off. I would actually see the toggle switch off but in this case, I have the established the persistent connection with the Home Assistant local server, and I can see three event types just came in. And if I, let's expand this slightly more, I can see I have a hue, white lamp, number three, 
turned off in my garage stairwell. And I can, it could be getting a little bit messy. So I could say, I only want to, um, I want to filter by only hue white lamp or hue yellow lamp or whatever it is and just clean that up a little bit or I can filter on different types of messages like sent or received. So Home Assistant has provided a good number of messages. If you wanna scroll through here, you can subscribe to a trigger, unsubscribe of course, specify what types of events you wanna be listening for. You can even do a ping. So you can say send that ping and hopefully we get back a pong. Let's take that filter off. Here's our ping, there's our pong. So a lot of fun web sockets, get services, understand all the different types of services that you have active or inactive um, and configure all sorts of things. So Home Assistant provides a REST API and a WebSockets API. There's a time and a place to experiment with the REST API, especially if you have a one-off, one-and-done type of API call. And there's instances where you want to play with the WebSockets API and establish a bi-directional connection, receive a bunch of updates from connected devices, receive sensor data. So check it out and let me know what you think.